Dreams are very important to me. Um, I keep a dream book and I note down any very vivid dream or dream that sort of stays in my mind. It's usually the ones we have before we wake up. Uh, not all my dreams, but those that um, sort of are stories in themselves. And sometimes they help me with my writing. Hmm? Um, dream stories, you could say. Hmm? And uh, particularly in this period, I think this coronavirus period, I seem to have been dreaming more than I normally do. Perhaps because I've been sleeping more than I normally do. Hmm? And uh, some very vivid dreams are there. And in fact, a couple of stories have have um, been the result of those dreams. One of them called The Little Princess, another The End of the Rainbow, and another called <coughs> The Enchanted Cottage. These are all new stories, not published yet. Publishers are having problems. Hmm? So it may be next year. Hmm? Somebody will bring them out. If you laugh too much, your head will fall off. My ayah used to tell me uh, when I was very small. As a result, I never throw my head back too far when I laugh, just in case. The trouble with these masks we've had to wear over the past nine months is that they prevent us from knowing if someone is smiling or frowning or gnashing his teeth. When my former bank manager called on me, I made a, a joke about him looking like a bank robber. And he laughed so much that he almost swallowed his mask. But laughter is on hold these days. Small businesses are struggling or have, or have ceased to struggle altogether. Many have lost their jobs. Migrant workers and their families go hungry. Planes are grounded. Travel is at a standstill. Things will soon be better, we are told. And we carry on in hope and expectation. As a writer, I've been lucky. Never one for the social scene or the party circuit. I've been quite happy to stock, stock up on all the books I've been wanting to read and many that I'll read again. And they make a pretty temple of literature on my sitting room floor. I hunker down behind these loaves of print, happy to spend two or three hours in their company before emerging in order to spend some time at my own writing desk. And do I write anything? Publishers may be slowing down, but this impatient writer is speeding up. After all, he's 86, and he'd like to squeeze in a few more tales, tall or short, before joining the great librarian in the sky. Where do these stories come from? Dreams, sometimes. And I find that I have been dreaming, dreaming more than usual during this stay-at-home period. Vivid dreams that stay with me for some time. So I record them in my dream book, and sometimes they turn into stories. Two of the stories written this year were based upon dreams. The others were the result of encounters with birds or animals. An owl has taken up residence in my attic, and he has tales to tell. So has the cricket, who has taken shelter in the folds of my rubber plant. He starts chirping in the middle of the night. I don't mind. It's good to have a little company. But I'm not lonely. I have a large and caring family who fuss over me a great deal, but who leave me alone when I want to be with my books and writing pad and the solitude of my room with its window looking out over the hills and valley. 
the window. That's what has kept me going all these months. Everyone needs a window. Nobody likes to feel shut in. And for a writer, a window is essential, even if it looks out on a railway yard or a bus stop or a busy street. It gives you a feeling of belonging to the rest of the world, even if it's only a broken world. My window opens out onto the clouds and the sky, and sometimes the clouds drift into the room. I am up at six, eager to watch the dawn break over the mountains. There it is, a deep pomegranate pink, stretching across the horizon. Soon it fades, and there is an interval before the sun comes up. That's the most wonderful moment of the day, the sun coming up in all its glory, actually bursting through my window and lighting up the entire room, so welcome on these cold winter mornings. From my window I see the valley stretching out below, small rivers feeding the Ganga to my left and others feeding the Yamna to my right. This is the perfect watershed. It ought to have some significance. It does for me. It has sometimes, it has sustained me for the last 50 years of my life and perhaps it will sustain me for a few more sunrises. There's a knock on the door. A gentleman from Finland wishes to see me. He's a publisher and wants some of my stories. As no one else is clamoring from them, I give them, I give him my recent dream stories and a couple of childhood memories. He writes out a check for a fat advance, collects the stories, puts them into a large bag, wishes me a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year, and makes his departure with a ho, ho, ho. I look at the check. It's signed S. Claus. Well, we can dream, can't we? Um, no, there's no Santa Claus in my life. Hmm? Um, uh, I've more or less um, had to stand on my own feet um, since I was out of school. Hmm? But um, I don't know about being Santa Claus to anyone else. <laughs> I think they would know better. I sit on my bed, which is close to my desk. Hmm? Uh, and so when I get tired or drowsy, I just topple over onto my bed hmm, and uh, have a good, nice sleep. Hmm. Um, so actually I work and sleep in the same room, uh, but I read in another room because I, for reading I need a comfortable chair. For writing, sometimes it's good to be uncomfortable because then you concentrate uh, you concentrate on, on, your, on what you're writing. I might say go for a walk and take a notebook with me and uh, sit down on an old wall somewhere and maybe put down a thought or two. But the actual writing has to be done, done at home.